Next question is from D Bear Twenty Seven. What's the biggest lesson you guys learned from your fathers? Oh, that's a good oh, one. Another father question. You know, I was with my uh, my dad. My parents actually ate over last night, and um, I I always I consciously try to do this in front of my kids, but I asked my father um, about what it was like when he grew up, because I think context uh, is really important. And I've ta- I've I've said I said this to Jessica. I, th- I said I think the children of immigrants have uh, an advantage sometimes because they have the advantage of context, I, you know, which I had. I had the advantage of context because my father, he was very, in, in, rela- in comparison to me, very poor, far less opportunities, he left school at the age of nine because his family literally needed a nine-year-old to work in order to provide money, you know, uh, for the family. Um, and so I have him tell these stories to provide that context uh, for my, you know, for my kids, so that they, my kids can realize what they have in front of them and what they can do with what they have in front of them, rather than taking things for granted. Um, so my dad taught me a lot of lessons. He was always there for his family. So we had dinner together every single night. He he worked his butt off, never complained. My dad must have worked seven days a week for years or decades. He, you know, seven days a week. But he came home four or five o'clock. And we would all have dinner together. We also planned uh, trips, even when you know, you know, he was supporting a family of six uh, in you know in the Bay Area. He was able to provide us with a middle class, uh, you know, uh, you know, lifestyle. Um, but it didn't it meant we couldn't afford expensive vacations. Stuff. So we'd do inexpensive things. We'd go camping, or we'd go, you know, somewhere nearby that we could drive to. But I never noticed that it was, you know, I always I always saw that it was a good time, and and he was super. Mm-hmm. involved. But the biggest lesson I learned from my dad was that lesson of context that he, he under, you know, I understood what I had, uh, m- because I knew what it was like for him growing up. And I saw his attitude about things. I saw that he always took personal responsibility. He never, um, you know, w- complained about working hard. He always did it. He always, uh, w- you know, was, uh, Family was very important to him. He talked about what it was like growing up uh, when he grew up in Sicily. And so that context, I think, is what has kept me grounded because it's really easy to take things for granted when you have a lot of stuff around you. It's really easy for you to start to expect things uh, to happen. So I think that's one of the better lessons that I got. Yeah, I think, I mean, the main thing that I can think of immediately is just the the integrity of of my father and and how um, it's just impenetrable. He... He strongly has beliefs and moral values that are super consistent and uh, is is willing to still be friends and have conversations with people that completely don't uh, abide by these uh, standards he has for himself and his family, but uh, stays very consistent to his uh, belief system. And I mean, that was a big thing for me to just because I tested it all the time as a kid and I was trying to poke holes in it and um, and he never varied from it. And I mean, I (laughs) I I was that kid that was always trying to push the limits of, well, I don't agree with you. I can have tattoos. You know, I'm not going to hell or, you know, whatever it was at the at the time that I found, um, you know, I had issues with because I was I was that kid that was searching like, well, why? Why do you know you believe this? Why do you think that way? And uh, he, he was just always very um, thoughtful in his response and very consistent uh, with uh, his belief system. And so uh, to this day, like that's I tried my best to be like that and uh, to treat people the way he's treated people to where he stays calm even in the midst of uh, these arguments and and. Uh, you know, a, a lot of too, I was shielded a lot from a lot of really like, like we were poor in certain instances that like, I didn't even realize we were poor, you know, like we have all these stories of like being down and out. And like you said, like going camping, like, dude, there was always things we were doing, but they were on a very low budget, but I didn't know our financial situation. I didn't know, uh, you know, the turmoil amidst the family that was like really negative at the time. Like it was just, it wasn't something I, I needed to uh, dwell on as a kid. And he didn't uh, bring that, that, that wasn't even a discussion until I find these things out way later as an adult, uh, why like all these things were happening. And so anyway, that's just some things that I, I, I reflect on that I was very 
thankful that, uh, you know, uh, he handled it the way he did. But did you have a horse? But I didn't have a horse. <laughs> didn't have so, a horse. <laughs> I didn't have a horse. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I wish I had a horse. Yeah. That would have been, been money. Overrated, dude. Yeah. Overrated. <laughs> Dinners are way cooler. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Could have just galloped <laughs> anywhere. Electricity you know what I mean? yeah, yeah, right. Electricity is way cooler, Could have fed him some hay, you know? <laughs> Uh, by the bay. Uh, so, um, well, I guess I guess what I learned um, from mine is is to be there, right? So my dad took his life when I was seven years old, um, so it wasn't obviously around. And that's also why I waited so long to have uh, Maximus is because um, I also, because of uh, how we grew up, I was extremely motivated to, to have things, to have success, financial success, and to um, have security there and <clears throat> be able to provide for my family and not have to worry about that. And I was really nervous in my 20s if I were to ever consider having a kid that young that I hadn't reached that point. And I, and I had already learned at a pretty young age what it was going to take to make really good money. Like anybody that I had talked to that had mentored me or that was very successful <clears throat> literally dedicated a lot of, of most of their life to uh, trying to become financially successful. I mean, just the, the amount of work that it took. And so I had this really, you know, crazy challenge or, or, or uh, you know, thing that I wrestled with in my brain is, okay, yeah, I do believe I want to have a son one day and I do want to make sure that I'm every bit there for him because I didn't have a father figure really in my life. And so I want to experience all that. And I definitely don't want to have a kid during the time. But then I had this other thing where I was like, man, I really, really want to be successful. And I know that it takes, you know, long hours and, and sacrifice and, constantly being buried into whatever this this career is and so I wrestled with that for a very long time and uh, feel very blessed that uh, you know have found uh, what we have found now and built what we've built because it has created this ability for me to not miss out on anything that Max is going through and I'm I'm, I'm very cognizant of every milestone and uh, every moment that I can be a part of because I know I didn't get that so you know, it's a it's a sad lesson because I didn't have it, but it's I'm also grateful for that because it's it's that it's on the top of mind for me all the time. It's not like, you know, I know that some I'm sure there's a lot of fathers out there that you know look at providing for their kids is like, hey, I'm I'm being a great dad, I'm providing, and I think that you are a great dad if you're providing for your family. But I also think there's another part that is really really important on how you mold and raise raise your kid and being a part of their family. And I'm I feel blessed that. I'm now in a position where I can do both, but I'm constantly thinking about uh, all the things that I didn't get to do, all the things that I, I I didn't have or missed out on by not having a father figure, and that I don't ever I I feel like I have an opportunity to live relive all that what I missed through my son, and so I feel like I'm not gonna miss out on that because. I'm very aware that I didn't get it, so I'm very determined to make sure that I'm a part of all of it. Mm. Cool, very cool. 